man, they call Meathead Meathead. You were on time. Yeah, I was I was in the room at 10.05, like I promised. Uh, but apparently problem. Raw ended at 10.03. Which is rare for Raw to end early, but good nonetheless. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. This is Damian Nelson. As I said, this is the Pro Wrestling Report. This is interactive. Thank you to all of us, all of you who have joined us in the chat room. It's nearly a sellout crowd again, me, Dad, in the chat room, and uh, that can be found at. If you're listening to this later on, you can find that at www. Dot pwrshow.com. Meathead, we've got an action-packed show this week. Uh, we are going to talk about the Raw that just went off the air a few minutes ago. We've got a preview of this week's PWR debate. We're going to take phone calls, and we're going to give a preview of this Sunday's TNA Destination X pay-per-view. Starting out, let's go on to talk about WWE Raw. Raw tonight coming from Indianapolis, California. Uh, California, right. Yeah, Indianapolis, Indianapolis, California, Nelson. Get it right. Come on. <laughs> Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. And uh, it was a Raw which uh, was not surrounded with very much hype, but a Raw that uh, really was interesting, uh, to say what? the least. What? And, well, well, indeed, and, and all the fans who have joined us in the chat room, if you want to speak, Go ahead and put yourself into the queue or go ahead and call in. Ignore the little prick asshole who is attempting to span the board. If you ignore him, he will go away. It is true. Hey, Damien, so Damien, that is all that you will you hear me impl- mention. Didn't you try employing that tactic on our previous February 29th show? Well, I wasn't. Well, I, I tried employing that, but uh, you are actually an adult. So be that as it may, don't acknowledge it, and it will go away. But be that as it may, we saw the show open with the one thing that was hyped, which was the big show taking on a professional fighter. Meathead, I thought that that match, uh, if you can call it that, was a little weak, specifically the fact that Mayweather and Big Show were having an argument via satellite. Yeah, that was kind of gay. Actually, not kind of. It was gay. It was interesting, especially when uh, the comparisons were made that Floyd Mayweather was about the same size as the uh, fighter from California that was in the ring. Uh, But the big thing was that fighter took a big bump when the big show threw him out over the top rope and to the floor. And that wouldn't be all that we would get from Mayweather. We also heard $20 million, a number being thrown around. Well, Meathead, as we said last week on the Pro Wrestling Report, it's not $20 million. That's part of the story. That's part of the hype. And you you are seeing that story come to light all over the Internet. Now, speaking of the Internet, if you haven't done so, folks that are out there, sign up for um, PWR Mobile. Uh, and if you are a PWR Mobile uh, subscriber, you got the announcement of the location of WrestleMania 25 just within the last hour, and uh, that is a free service exclusive to all of you who signed up for PWR Mobile. We then saw on WWE Raw tonight, HBK team up with Ric Flair. Obviously, HBK inducting Ric Flair into the Hall of Fame at WrestleMania. Sorry, the night before WrestleMania, but we also see that match at WrestleMania. HBK saying, I'm not really sure, Meathead, where that ended, because HBK HBK saying again that he did not want uh, to end Ric Flair's career at WrestleMania. That match could be the most emotionally charged match in Orlando, Florida on March 30th. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It's going to come down to, in the next two to three weeks, HBK is going to say, look, man, I don't want to do this. Sweet chin music. Yeah, push me to do it. It's kind of predictable, but uh, I, I guess I'm interested. Eh, just a little bit. It was a good angle nonetheless. Uh, and then, Meathead, next week, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, our hometown, the home office, if you will, of PWR. We're going to be at the Bradley Center for WWE Raw, along with the man, Frank Cosentino. And Boy, who? We, Frank who? Cosentino. Uh, he oh, will be uh, moderating yeah. the debate this week. Uh, But before that happens, we're going to be uh, going to WWE Raw. And as you know, it is a three-hour episode. It's a WrestleMania Rewind, ladies and gentlemen. WrestleMania Rewind uh, for the Milwaukee's Bradley Center. So come on and be a part of it. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet already here in Milwaukee, excuse us, folks. You should be muted on entry, but uh, that didn't quite happen. Uh, this This is plain fun. There's music and everything now. Are we listening to Studio B again? <laughs> With Shepard Smith, yeah. Um, but from there, 
Jericho's Highlight Reel returns, Meathead. Your thoughts on that? Unfortunately, Jericho's Highlight Reel did not return with the music that normally accompanies Highlight Reel, which is Saliva's King of My World. Jeff Hardy was the guest. Two participants in the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 24. Your thoughts on Jeff Hardy delivering the twist of fate to a person, Jericho, who was already in the ring when we came back from commercial break. One topic we're going to talk about on an upcoming edition of PWR is, is Jericho really worth all the hype? And Meathead, we have our opinions on that, but really, what was, what is the current status of Chris Jericho. We'll talk about that in an upcoming edition of the Pro Wrestling Report. But Meathead, your thoughts on the highlight reel tonight and Jeff Hardy's twist of fate on Y2J. Um, you know, it, it was it was fine. It was where it needed to be. Jeff Hardy, again, the push to the moon. I mean, to the point where this push has been going on for so long. This push has even engulfed me, Damien, on, you know uh, – 2007, I I finally admitted that, you know what, he has my interest. He has piqued my interest. Jeff Hardy's push has even engulfed me. That's how big a push this is. It's gotten a guy who honestly never, ever liked Jeff Hardy. But this push is so huge, it's even trapped me. Jeff Hardy, who's been in your very own top five, uh, and three count, rather. uh, He's never been in my top five, jackass. He's been in my three count. Occasionally, I make an error. My apologies. Uh, be that oh, as it may. Are you going to make a statement? Are you going to release a statement on that too? No. John Cena beats your man, Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. In a decent match. A decent uh, match. No, it, it was okay. Uh, a la WCW going to commercial break during that matchup. John Cena wins. John Cena put in charge of Raw tonight. A uh, smart move by WWE over the next three weeks, taking the three participants of the main event at WrestleMania and putting them in charge of Raw. Meathead, Maria stands up to Santina Morella as he asks her if it is that timing of the month. <laughs> as we see the cover of her Playboy With magazine. Santino in every spot. Which is and funny, too, because I've, I've seen a picture on the uh, interweb. You've heard of this Ooh. thing, the interweb? Yes, yes, but, yes. Uh, That's where they got that forum, email, right? Yeah. On our forum at pwrshow.com, uh, there was a leaked photo of the cover with, um, yeah, WWE logos over all the money spots. And instead, we see it come out into the middle of the ring with Santino's face over every spot. <laughs> Funny stuff. We saw Jerry the King Lawler get involved, and actually, um, and actually, sock Santino in the jaw. Now, here's the difference that between a Santino and a Jericho. Jericho, arguably, used to be in the role of a Santino Morella. Is today's fan, and we'll dig deeper into this on an upcoming episode. But is today's fan immune to the comedic antics of a Chris Jericho, which we don't see much of anymore? But is that is, is that connection lost? With the fans that he once had. Um, you know what? That's again future episode. I don't know if we can delve deep enough into something like that right now. Uh, Jericho uh, is falling victim to the same thing he fell victim to when he was champion. Way too many other things going on that are just given more priority than him. When you think about it, Jericho, when he was champion, what was going on at that exact same time? Triple H returning, the NWO. All that other stuff. That's why even though Damian Nelson will tell you that Jericho was the lowest rated champion, blah, blah. It's Diesel because, was the lowest rated. Jericho was close. It's because of all the other stuff that was going on. Jericho was never the main event. He was the 9 o'clock hour match. We did eventually see the actual cover with, fan, with some pyrotechnics and uh, Candice and Michelle in the ring to Loser. help. Uh, what do you think of the cover, me, that Really? Dude, Maria's You not can't judge a magazine high. by its cover. Yes, you can, actually. The only thing that's worthwhile looking into that magazine, did you look close enough? Because I, I didn't look at Maria. I looked at, oh, Jenna Fisher's going to be in there. Now, obviously not naked, because, you know, I got a thing for Jenna Fisher. Boing! But Jenna Fisher's going to be in there. Now, is she going to be talking about dirty, filthy things? I don't know. You know, when she was singing to Dewey Cox, you know, about coming in her back door. That's the kind of stuff that I want to see. Carlito takes on Cody Rhodes in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup, 
And it looked as if Meathead for a while that it was going to be Cody Rhodes because we saw <laughs> Carlito job to a bird in a WrestleMania promo but earlier fantastic. in the evening. Fantastic. Fantastic. You would, of course you enjoyed that. I thought it was completely lame. <laughs> but hilarious hilarity. Interesting. Well, it was Carlito qualifying for the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania. And then, speaking of WrestleMania, Mike Adamley announces the next inductee into the Hall of Fame. And it is somebody we said would get inducted this year. Yes. As PWR projected, it is indeed Johnny Mae Young. Johnny Mae Young inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And we will be there, Meathead. Uh, part of our WrestleMania coverage, as well as TNA going live that week for Impact we'll on Thursday, show. March 27th. And we will be also there for um, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony at the Amway Arena. And uh, I a think few select a seats are still available via Ticketmaster if you have not yet gotten your tickets for Can that you? show. I think there might be a little Ring of Honor in there as well somewhere. Uh, there, uh, I think there, there will be, be Ring of Honor in there. Yeah, you, you like the way I brought that in there? Uh, that's good. That's good. You're always good with the segues and whatnot. Yeah. And then we all we needed in the next angle was Maury Povich because Finley, you are the father. <laughs> no, uh, not uh, you know that whole angle pretty much. Yeah. I mean, first off, JBL not even there, um, and I understand that, but uh, uh, oh, that whole thing as we said on the show last week. There's just no heat, as Lawler Freak just said in the chat room. There's just no heat for that uh, for that angle. And and what was it? What was it that JBL did to Hornswoggle? Um, made sweet sweet midget love to him. Now come on, be realistic here. Well, you can't put that on the TV. That's why we couldn't watch it. He turned the lights out for bow, chicka, bow. <laughs> I think New Jersey guy may have gotten it best here in the chat room. Michael Jackson loved that segment tonight. Be that as it may, <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens with that angle. I would and, uh, expect a match. Hey, hopefully JBL doesn't put him a uh, midget on a pole. I would expect that uh, Finley, whose new music completely deadened him, by the way, I would expect that Finley uh, will take on JBL at WrestleMania 24, March 30th in Orlando, Florida. The main event tonight on Raw was uh, Randy Orton taking on Triple H. We saw Cena get involved. We saw Orton stand tall with the title as Raw went off the air. Meet had your thoughts of that match and Raw overall. What the hell happened that it ended at 10.03? Central, folks. 10.03 Central. Uh, three minutes after, dude, that's supposed to run till seven or seven or eight. What happened? That's basically that a, uh, that's basically what happened right there. What happened? That's a very very good question. But anyway, sometimes you want to leave the fans wanting more, and maybe that was what WD, WE, WWE uh, attempted to do. WWE attempted to do this evening. That was Raw, ladies and gentlemen. We have got a couple of people who want to talk. We have got your uh, queued up, your calls queued up here, and uh, we will go to first vintage two seven seven two. Again, when we take your call, ladies and gentlemen, we need your name and where you're from. Vintage two seven seven two in the chat room. You're on PWR Interactive. Yo, what's up? Hey, what's going on? What's your question? Uh, uh, matter of fact, let me pull it back. Damien said, what's your name? Your name is Vintage. Where are you from? Jersey. Jersey, okay. Jersey, yeah. Uh, my question is, why did Ross suck? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> why? Did, what did you guys think of John Cena's commentary? <laughs> ruining the oh, damn match? robotic. Robotic. I mean... I would have rather had Jason Sensation do commentary because at least he can do. Oh, commentary. Jason Sensation—that's some old school stuff. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Hold on. It's enough, and it's time for a change. <laughs> <laughs> I could play that, but you know it's gonna take a while. Sure. Uh, the thing with uh, Cena's commentary—it was kind of like his T-shirt, very <laughs> old school, very blocky, very chunky, and very just crap. Damien? You know, I, I didn't think it was horrible, as usual. Um, I thought it was uh, an interesting spin. I wondered why when he first came out, but then realized that he was indeed the general manager, if you will, of um, Raw tonight, so it seemed to make some sense. I don't think it was as bad as it could have been. 
No, if he was the general manager of the show, he was wasn't certainly he no Stevie for Ray. Every match? <laughs> wasn't he supposed to be responsible for every match if he's the general manager of the show, or is he just responsible for the other two's uh, matches for the evening? Because that's not been made clear. Never know. He could draw up a game show right now, WWE Idol featuring John Cena. Uh, Mr. Single, 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 well, we, we we did see the dating game, so... Uh, the dating game was funny. Know. It was. Damn. That's one thing a lot of fans may not realize yet. We have not necessarily reported on it, because it's more of a personal situation than a public situation, but Ron Simmons in rehab, uh, courtesy of WWE. A lot Along of with there. a man that will take you to the labyrinth of your mind. <laughs> New Jersey, thanks for the call, and uh, thanks for tuning in to PWR Interactive. Uh, no. Let's go now to our next caller. It is uh, going to be, as I find, Brad Kiker, uh, 27 years old. Brad, you are on PWR Interactive. What's up, guys? Not hey, much. How are you? Where are you from, Brad? Tennessee. I called last week. You made fun of me. Oh, Not come come on. On. That was Damien that might have made fun of you. It wasn't me. I, I make fun uh, of no one. <laughs> all right, guys, I just want to get your take on the uh, Curry Man gimmick in TNA yeah. and what you think about it. It's hot. Mina, and that spicy. one's for you. <laughs> and it tastes great. You know what? Um, I haven't had a character like Curry Man in a while, one that I can get behind, and it just makes me giggle and fuzzy on the inside. I mean, I love the Curry Man. And matter of fact, every week that he comes out, he's got a little bit extra in his um, video presentation, in his dance, in his gimmick. I mean, you see the different uh, screen antics that are going on. His sleeves stay hot. His sleeves stay spicy. His back says taste great. It keeps getting better for me. Obviously, Curry Man, Christopher Daniels, if you know that, you know that. If you don't know that, you just enjoy him as uh, Curry Man. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's a fun angle, too, TNA having a little fun. TNA, um, you know, it's part of their, their, their latest drive to uh, sort of detract themselves away from the phenomenal wrestling uh, that they uh, that brought them to the dance, to be honest with you, and, and sort of getting more into that entertainment element of things. And, you know, I don't think that they have the guidance – that they need right now as far as data, as far as ratings and buy rates, to really know what works for them and still trying to experiment with some of these entertaining elements and certainly working. Well, what Thank you very you, much uh, for the call, Brad. Yeah, I, uh, you don't think, Damien, that this is something that if they get away from Curry Man being with uh, Stone Cold Shark Boy, um, do you think that he could actually be a useful wrestler? Well, eventually, I think we're going to see Christopher Daniels return to the ring in mm. TNA. Um, I just don't know when at that point. At this but, point, but that would mean the end of Curry Man. Well, you know, all good things must come to an end. Meet no, they shouldn't. Let's go to Gonzalez Rocky Dash Seven One Four in the chat room. You're on PWR Interactive. Caller, go ahead. Oh, hey, this is uh, Juan calling from Anaheim. Okay. Hello, Juan from Anaheim. From Anaheim. I should try to call last week, but uh, it was cut off. No problem. Yeah. Somebody broke. We the broke internet. the internet. I, it wasn't me. I swear to God. <laughs> Anyways, what's go ahead question? with your question or comment. I have a question. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, have you seen the WWE.com? How it has in the new uh, the new tabs? It promotes TNA and Ring of Honor. I just thought it was pretty weird just seeing that kind of stuff. They're actually freaked out. Yeah, well, and it's a smart move by WWE, in my oh, opinion, no. because they call it industry news. What they're simply doing is acknowledging and, and realizing that the current wrestling fan is going to a lot of different websites all over the web to get their news. And WWE, by driving more of those people to their website on a more regular basis, impressions go up, traffic goes up. No. Advertising revenues no. go up. No. WWE no. is yeah. doing this as a business no. move, but remember they are filtering the information. It's edited. It's not okay. just a live feed or stream. It's filtered information. They are choosing what news to put up. So they're making conscious decisions to put up information about TNA and ROH. Now, if they would have done this and not included information about the other organizations, I think people would have been nailing or or, 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 or uh, slamming WWE for doing that. I think this is really a class move by WWE. We'll just have to see how long it lasts. Uh, absolutely uh, opposite. 
uh, opinion on this, Damien. The fact that, and this is something that, you know, I've heard Nelson mention, and I've heard other people mention in other lines of work. You don't mention, you don't acknowledge, you don't recognize the one below you. Why give credence to the ones that are below you? Damien has said many, many times, if you're number one, you don't have to acknowledge number two. And ROH, you know, a technically... Well, they, they didn't they do it with BCW, though? I'm sorry, say that again? They, they did it with ECW back in 97. They were putting money into ECW. ECW wasn't competing with WWE. They were okay. putting money into it. So uh, these are completely different businesses. Now, the fact they twofold. acknowledge them... Uh, can I get this off? Can I say <laughs> this? Thank you. The fact that they acknowledge this, the fact that they acknowledge that there's TNA, the fact that they acknowledge Reign of Honor, is, it looks like desperation to me, to be quite honest. If you're WWE and you need to control your product, how are you going to go ahead and acknowledge the other products? You're just basically saying, well, we know that's out there, but we want your business, so here, come look at all this stuff over here, too. We've got that, too. Yeah. And I think it's a very smart know. move by WWE. I think it's also, to your point, Meathead, it's also... Yes, acknowledging the quote-unquote competition, but WWE at this point does not look at TNA or Ring of Honor as competition, and statistically, they shouldn't. That's a fact. Okay. But th that just contradicts itself when they put that stuff on their board because they acknowledge that they are there. They're part of the industry. Do you really think, if though, that industry, acknowledging – If you're in the industry, you're competition. Do you think that acknowledging w, uh, the TNA or Ring of Honor is really going to impact any of the business WWE is going to do? No, I think they're – honestly, if I were TNA or Ring of Honor, I'd sue for copyright. Oh, oh no. They're both because very happy with this. Oh, Some no, people no, no, who've no, been to WWE.com. No, you're using my name on your site to promote you. You're using me to put you over. So if I were to find – like, for example, if I were to go to somebody else's website and see my full fucking name on there, I'd be a little Language. pissed off. Language. I'd be a little pissed off. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if I were Ring of Honor or if I were TNA and I would find my name on somebody else's website, especially somebody like WWE, I'd be a little pissed off. Well, clearly a difference in opinion there. I clearly uh, see it as a smart business move by WWE. It's almost as if, you know, typically you see um, television stations uh, cover each other when big news stories when happen. When bad now. news happens. When bad, when big news, big Only stories when happen. when bad news happens. When there's something positive another station does, they don't put over the other station. Uh, WWE is absolutely not in any threat by putting up select information about TNA or Ring of Honor on their website. It will yeah, ultimately I, I help WWE. We've got to move on. Caller, your final thought. Uh, I just think it's a good deal. It's like at least we have somewhere to go, and then we have the news there. For the IWC? Well, anyone yeah. just could go in there and just check everything else. Well, it's good for the other promotions. You know, I'm a, I'm a TNA fan. I haven't yeah. seen a lot of Ring of Honor, so that kind of opened some doors for me. But will you, it, when given, if given the opportunity, would you, based off this, take advantage of a Ring of Honor opportunity over a WWE opportunity, which means watch Ring of Honor programming or go to a Ring of Honor show in lieu of WWE because WWE told you about Ring of Honor? I'll, I'll keep on watching WWE. Point made. Thank you very much for that call, and thank you for tuning in to PWR Interactive Media. Let's move on to TNA. We'll take some more calls in just a minute here, but let's talk about this Sunday's pay-per-view, Destination X. It's going to be on the road, and there are four big matchups on the top of the card that we know of right now. First off is for the Knockout Championship, Austin knockout Kong. Championship. Versus, well, it, she is indeed in the match. It's Austin Kong versus Gail Kim versus ODB in what I call, Meathead, the best women's wrestling division in the industry right now, TNA's because knockout division. Because there's two. I mean, let's be honest. There's two. Well, there's two, which means one can be one better good, than the other. And one is, uh, yeah, one is the best and one is not the best. So, I mean, it's like saying, you know, here uh, in Milwaukee, boy, you know, we've got some of the greatest pool rooms around, and this one's the best. My friend, there's like two. I simply gave my opinion, and that I have your opinion away. on the match. It doesn't take away from the fact that the TNA women's knockout division is by far the best I've seen 
not at today, but the best I've seen currently. Their wrestling and their storytelling and the way they mix in the different main event women and then the you know second tier women. They'll throw in an Angelina Love and they'll throw in you know a uh, Roxy Lavo. I mean those get mixed in with the main eventers right now, which are Kong, Kim, and ODB. I love the way they kind of rotate them around. And for those of you in the chat room, WWE and to you, Meathead, has a women's wrestling division. They have women's wrestlers, such as Mickey James, such as uh, the Victoria. Glamazon. Uh, it's just a matter of how much wrestling they actually allow. Lest not we forget, Trish Stratus versus Mickey James, WrestleMania 22, one of the best female wrestling matches I've ever seen. Yep, except for the blown spot at the end, it was probably the best one I've ever seen. It is then Jay Lethal, Black Machismo, taking on the Maple yeah. Leaf Muscle, P.D. Williams. And Should be an amazing up. matchup. X Division matchup, P.D. Williams, obviously one of my favorites. Uh, Black Machismo, Jay Lethal, again, one of my favorites as well. This match really has the potential of stealing the show. Yeah, I think so too. And But again, the point I make is, and this got built up how it's just, hey, you know, Scott's holding the X Division title chance, and he's holding the world title chance. Eh, well, Petey's next to him, so we'll just give Petey the title shot. I mean, there's no build-up to it. Not that it won't be a great match. There's just no build-up to it. We've seen some phenomenal matches in TNA with little to no build-up, and that's really, um, you know, people talk about now that WWE is promoting them. Maybe there will be a little more uh, acknowledgement of Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor has some pretty distinct storylines, and don't forget, folks, a couple of new DVDs out, special sale at Ring of Honor Wrestling, uh, ROHWrestling.com, and uh, you get the opportunity to check out some of their pay-per-views that have been released and also some of their amazing wrestling DVDs that are also available. But Ring of Honor, a lot of times they'll just put two people out there in a match on a card and blow the place up. So I don't need the build-up in this particular match because knowing the abilities and the skills of a P.D. Williams and mm-hmm. a Jay Lethal, because I still think before Jay Lethal became the Black Machismo, I still think of how great a lot of those Jay Lethal matches were without the cloud of that gimmick surrounding him. And I don't think it's a bad cloud, but again, it certainly does cloud some people's judgment because it is a bit of a comedic character. Yeah, exactly, especially with the asking of SoCal Val. Will you go out with me? Oh, yeah. I was down on one knee to ask her out, which was a little unique. but uh, Yeah. And Petey Williams, I mean, I, I'm not sure what's going on with him and Scott Steiner, to be honest with you. That whole angle is a little confusing to me. But uh, and by the what, way, what the benefit is is having Petey Williams back up in main in matches on cards and actually relevant again yeah. in, w, in uh, TNA. By the way, TNA. Is it just me, or do they come up with some of the worst gimmick names ever? Raka Khan? What the hell is a Raka Khan? Well, I think she feels for you. Yeah, but Raka Khan, Black Rain, Relic, oh, these names are all hackney. We uh, got to a point earlier on in his career, um, when we were referring to Bobby Lashley, Black Lesnar, where we, I think there was a point where we didn't even mention his name on the show. I think Black Rain may be that superstar nowadays yeah yeah pretty much yeah booker t will take on robert rude mr robert rude robert rude really turning into a big star in tna and obviously booker t who's now given a pinky salute a little bit when he comes down uh on the <laughs> tna impact programming uh that match a grudge match i guess you can call it that because of what happened and what's been going on over the last few weeks between <laughs> robert rude and booker t <laughs> Damien, didn't you just say a week ago, who has a grudge match on a pay-per-view, honestly? That was one of those, say that? Yeah. That was one of those quote-unquote inside jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Um, uh, credit's got to be given to Booker T, because Booker T is helping out Rude get even farther you know, than where he was, and he's pushing Rude up you know, to the moon. Exactly, and on speaking of up to the moon, on top of the card is the Angle Alliance, which is Kurt Angle, Tyson Tomko, and AJ Styles going up against the team of Samoa Joe, 
Christian Cage, and Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash, who's been very impressive, Meathead, since his return to the ring, and I was privileged enough to be at that pay-per-view when Kevin Nash did return to the ring, um, much more impressive than a Scott Steiner, who, quite frankly, um, is, is, is a very intimidating figure, but um, will probably admit himself that uh, the, the time is past of his prime. But anyways, that is a six-way tag team match. Your thoughts on that big match on top of Destination X? You know, the thing with Kevin Nash is um, obviously he looks older now because he stopped dying his hair. I mean, he's the Bob Barker of TNA Wrestling right now. He just <laughs> stopped doing the dying. But you know what? Kevin Nash used in spots, kind of like they did with Flair, Kevin Nash used in spots can bring it to the ring. Again, you know, he's got the moves, Damien. Uh, you know, they talk about Cena and his five moves of doom. Kevin Nash had six moves. One of them was playing with his hair. You know, Which, you know, and I elbow. think it says a lot about Kevin Nash. This might sound silly, but we used to joke about years ago on the show, all Kevin Nash cared about when he was in that ring was how his hair looked. Now he's even gone to say he's not going to keep trying to fool anybody, including himself, by dyeing his hair or what have you. He is he has distinguished himself and I think, Mead, gained quite a bit of respect as a wrestler in the ring now based on his behavior in TNA. No, I don't think it's respect as a wrestler. I think it's respect as a performer because Kevin Nash isn't in every match. He isn't in the main. He isn't in the mix. He's around, and he's he's in sniffing distance. But Kevin Nash is just another character anymore. He's not at the top of the WCW card like he always had to be when he was the commissioner or when he controlled the book or whatever. Kevin Nash is quietly earning the respect as just another performer on the show. Smartly said, and uh, similar to what we speculated uh, WWE's use of Ric Flair should be, especially as he goes down the final le- uh, ledge of uh, of his roadway that is his career. But uh, be that as it may, it should be an interesting pay-per-view. We've also got Rhino going up against uh, James Storm, and I believe that is the Ultimate X match. Um, so Elevation. it should be Elevation X, sorry. Uh, should be a good pay-per-view. Again, that is this Sunday, folks, and we'll be covering that pay-per-view right here on PWRshow.com. Also, don't forget, this week on PWR Show, it is indeed the debate, where if you have not yet submitted your question, you may do so via our YouTube channel, and look for the PWR debate uh, video, and go ahead and submit your, we want some video submissions, folks. We're a little light on video submissions. You've got a webcam, you've got a camcorder at home, similar to the CNN YouTube debates, uh, these indeed being the PWR YouTube debates. And speaking of CNN, Make sure whoever you choose to vote for, if you're in Texas, Ohio, Vermont, or Rhode Island, tomorrow is indeed Election Day. Your vote does count for whomever you choose to vote for. So make sure you head on out to the polls and make your voice known. Anyways, Meathead, let's take a couple more phone calls, and we are going to go to uh, The Outsider, 21 years old, your name and location here on PWR Interactive. What's going on, guys? Good night. How about you? Yeah. Uh, no Where are you calling from? Calling from Oshawa, ah. Ontario, Canada. There wasn't pause. enough pause in there. Do it again. I'm sorry? I said there wasn't enough pause in there. Do it again. I hail from Oshawa. Okay. Ontario, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, come on, man, we only got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead with your question or comment, caller. Uh, my comment is basically about the TNA show coming up. Do you think that Samoa Joe does not have the same respect that he once did? Totally doesn't. There's, it absolutely doesn't. Um, you know, the um, the top of the TNA card uh, has been the same for about the last year. Mm-hmm. You add Kurt Angle in there, there's a little variety. You add Booker T in there, there was a little variety for a little while. But you've had the same people on top of the card for last year. Now, you could have that argument and WWE as well, but WWE clearly has a deeper talent pool than uh, TNA. I think that Samoa Joe has been the one who's never gotten that chance, never gotten the title. And when it finally happens, is it really something we've been waiting for, or is it something that it's just too long overdue? I don't know. To me, like there would have been a little bit more mystique about it if he 
what a win against Angle, you know, in the the series that he had with them, and when the NWA title was still uh, used for TNA, that would have been a little bit more special if he won that instead of just, you know, the TNA championship. But it's a little bit hard since uh, Kurt Angle's playing the Jeff Jarrett now of TNA. Yeah, even though you still have Jeff Jarrett too, but Jeff Jarrett just realizes that, you know, a Kurt Angle is kind of the guy you do want to put, you know, the heel champion that you do want to put the belt on and have everybody chase, you know, Kurt Angle. And you're right, Kurt Angle is being the Jeff Jarrett, you know, when Jeff Jarrett was the quote-unquote heel champion that everybody was chasing. Because whenever Jeff Jarrett dropped the belt, Jeff Jarrett figured out a way to get it back. Well, of course, and plus he had his own little faction, too. He had America's right, right. Most Wanted. and mm-hmm. But, um... Jamie Nelson, I know you always keep saying that the Canadian Destroy is your favorite finishing maneuver of all time. Yada, yada. One of my I rewound it six well. times last week on TNA Impact. <laughs> the yeah, instant replay button. Well. Now, you keep mentioning that for, for, uh, for TNA. Now, if you had to choose only one that's specifically used in WWE, what do you think is the best finishing move? Same wow. question to that, me, had too. In WWE, best finishing move. Huh. You know, I, I really know do I like the backcracker. I, I really do like the backcracker. I really also do like the uh, clothesline from hell mm-hmm. uh, from JBL. Um, yeah, it's, uh, give me a minute to think about that one. It, it, that's, that's an interesting question, one I've not contemplated. Yeah, I think that's a great question. And, you know, the, the Celtic Frost is one that I kind of like from Finley. Uh, the Codebreaker, which is the backcracker basically out of Jericho. Yeah, the fa- um, running face crusher kind of. Yeah. Um, well, the codebreaker is where he lands him. What does he do? I, he does he jumps and he him. kind of drives his knee into the forehead, yeah, basically, and falls down much. with it. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's a, that's a great question. You know, we're going to have to think about that. To be honest with you. And, and you know, of course, I have him. indeed. I've always been a fan of the Swanton Bomb. Ugh. Yeah. Because it is it is a sweet move. I mean, seriously, the Kenton Bomb, whatever. Any time a Senton Bomb. Um, great move, but it, um, it gets yeah, the maybe. crowd reaction, yeah. But I don't know. To me personally, like Undertaker's always been my favorite, and looking at a tombstone every single time always just looks like it's it's over every single time he hits it. It is a definitive finishing move. That it is. is. But the problem I have with pile drivers and tombstones tombstones is that their head never hits the canvas. Obviously, <laughs> but you can, it's well, so it's obvious on TV. Well, that's when you had, you know, actually good people that were, like, camera back in the days in, like, the early 90s. And you see a guy with the longish mullet hairs, and they get tombstone. It looks all, you just completely destroyed him. Now everybody's, like, sporting the short hair. And it's like, oh, it's tombstone. Let's zoom in right on his knees. And he's, like, three inches from the ground. (laughs) I do agree with you. Uh, Chat room named the 1010. uh, Mark Gendrick's Centon was probably one of the best ones in in the business. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you know what? Thanks I actually, for the call from the Great White North. I'm sure you tuned in too. You know what I actually missed is I missed the fact that uh, remember when uh, uh, Sean O'Hare came around, not Jindrak, but Sean O'Hare when he came around, he had that secondary character that uh, you know was kind of supposed to be Devil's Advocate. Whatever happened to that? I think that uh, that during that angle, there was uh, Roddy Piper was released, or there was some type of conflict, and Roddy Piper was his. Uh, manager or mentor, and I think once that um, was, had to be walked away from, I think that uh, there, that uh, O'Hare suffered. Yeah, there was a plenty of uh, plenty of potential with that. Or was that around the same time that uh, Tenacious Z Zach Gowan came in with his fake leg? Well, moving right along, let's go on to our next caller. We're going to go to JT some sixteen. JT some 1670. You are on PWR Interactive. What's your name and where are you calling from? Well, my name is John I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. John oh, from Memphis, John. Tennessee. Oh, a survival. little bit of a tragedy there earlier today. Six people shot. Ooh. Again? Uh, um, well, I, it was on my one of my, my favorite channel on cable, CNN. Uh, I don't watch CNN. Breaking news I was there a little while ago. I don't but anyways, CNN. Memphis, more importantly known for its professional wrestling and Beale Street. Go right ahead with your call, John. Your question well, or comment, rather. Well, I, I got a couple of things to say. First of all, me here, you're, you are a genius, sir. You are, <laughs> you, and as one Republican to another, sir, uh, I agree with you. Me here, you was robbed during the during the. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you. All right. But first of all, I'd like to say I love y'all. I've been watching y'all show now for the past, I don't know, 
two two years now since okay. I got on to the show. I I like to say, Nika, you are the star of the show. But all the, all but all seriousness all seriousness, guys, I just wanna say this. What do you think of this this Hall of Fame? There's rumors that Jake the Snake might be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I don't I don't believe that, but what do you think of that? Damien, uh, I think I'm going to take this one first, if you don't mind. Um, Jake the Snake, if he – because the WWE apparently is paying for his rehabilitation. Yeah, I know that. I heard, I heard that. If he's able to get clean enough – remember, this isn't a wrestling Hall of Fame. It's the WWE Hall of Fame. True. At some point, they have to have either worked for WWE, WWF, WWWF, or been involved in something that Vince has some money in somehow. Because – well, no, the I Vern, the Kanyas. I understand the AWA. I understand the AWA was also recognized last year with Vern Gagne, Greg Gagne, you know, Bachwinkle, those guys. I understand that. But let's which, be he, which Vince McMahon stole everything from. Yeah, this is Vince's WWE Hall of Fame. So if Jake is able to clean up, I think there's a spot for him. I don't know if this year, though. You think there's a spot for him? You heard the rumors that he's in a rehab with uh, with Scott Hall right now, right? Uh, yeah, most likely. Because Scott Hall, I mean, you know, last time we really saw him any, doing any kind of rehab, he was on WCW Nitro, and they found Ric Flair at the nursing home. Well, here's yeah. the thing about Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake the Snake Roberts is a professional wrestling icon, I believe. I think that you ask most fans if they know Jake the Snake Roberts, and they can name, name his snake which, of course, is a name I'm very familiar with. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, Axe Smash Demolition. The question is, does does Jake deserve it for his behavior outside the ring? I think that the sporting world has proved that behavior outside the sport uh, does not matter. When you look at what Jake the Snake contributed to the business, and he contributed a hell of a lot, whether it be he in the class or in WWE, he really is indeed deserving, I think, of a Hall of Fame induction. Hey, hey Damien. Do you think Jake the Snake is probably the greatest psycho- psychologist, ring psychologist in the in the in the history of professional wrestling? You know that's been said. And um, when Jake the Snake was a heel, he was indeed, I think, one of the best heels in the history of the business. Um, and even as a face, because remember his program with Ravishing Rick Rude. Rick Rude was in, and the wife was involved, and Rick Rude was uh, wearing his uh, his, <laughs> his, uh, wife, his, his wife's wife's face picture on. on yeah, I mean, really, there there was some great stories surrounding Jake yeah. the Snake. And remember the great story told right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in 1996 at the King of the Ring when Jake almost won it. Jake almost taking the King of the Ring, which is where we saw Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin in Austin 316 born. I think Jake the Snake should be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Whether this year or not is the year, I don't know. I only had my money on May Young, and that has happened. So from this point, what about sure. the Royal Warriors? What about the Royal Warriors? Again, you know, John Orton Titus, uh, uh, you know, animal, and and obviously Hawk no longer with us. Uh, yeah, I mean, some say that they were the greatest tag team of all time. I I don't know if I agree with that. I'm a demolition boy, um, but um, yeah, there's so many people deserving, and I can I, I don't think Meathead's point was accurate or valid about it. You have to be somehow or another tied to WWE. However, you look at some other names such as Abdullah the Butcher and some other people who were who are synonymous with the wrestling business. Or Bruce the Brody. Sure. Bruce the Brody, of course. Bruce the Barber Beef. I mean, so many. Brother Love should be in the Hall of Fame, but uh, I mean, you could really go in, in so many different directions. But it, 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 there's a lot of politics involved with yeah, who is chosen to be in the Hall of Fame because you got to look at it. What's their relationship with the company? Mm-hmm. What might they say when they get put up at that podium? And would they even accept the induction into the Hall of Fame? Because really, many believe the true wrestling Hall of Fame is the Collie Footlower Alley Club with the induction in June um, run by Nick Bockwinkle, who is residing out in Las Vegas along with Mike Tanay. And live together, Mike Tanay lives out there as well. Um, and uh, I plan to attend my first Collie Flower Alley induction ceremony. It is awesome. I've been there Casino before. In June of this year. I've been there before. It's, it's awesome. So you got to try it. it it's, it's fun. I, I see... I saw the Mass Superstar, uh, aka of uh, what's it, Axe or Smash? I forgot whoever it was, and it's it's one of the greatest, greatest thing. It, I literally go in there, talk to the, talk to the guys, and it brings back memory because I grew up in Memphis, and Memphis 
is one of the hotbeds of professional wrestling. No offense right. to no offense to uh, Milwaukee or Chicago or none New York. Taken. None taken. You you kind of agree because almost everybody that is in the past, I say, forty years who is who is a superstar has wrestled there. I've seen in the past twenty five years. I've seen almost. I could count ten uh, ten uh, war champions that had been that came through there in their beginning time, from Kurt Angle to The Rock. I see Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan, uh, pretty much everybody else, and I just love watching that show. So, and I love watching y'all guys. And once again, me here, you are a genius. <laughs> hey, and one more, thing before, one more thing before we let you go, too. Have you ever run into the band Saliva? Because they're from Memphis, and I love Saliva. I actually do. I used to live down the street from them. I oh, used... those are my guys. Yeah, they're from, they from, uh... hello? One of the most yes. fascinating things about Memphis, Tennessee, is the Pyramid Arena. Don't let them tear it down. No, no, do, 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 do. That is a crap shoot. Ah, come on. When you can build do, an do, arena right. that's the shape of a pyramid that goes up and out on the inside but not on the outside, it's fascinating. All right, Let thanks for the call. It's thanks for the call. Be sure to tune in next week uh, as we come to you live from the Bradley Center in Milwaukee for PWR Interactive. Thank you very much for calling in. Mita, let's go to another caller. And uh, it's, it, it, it would only be my wish if uh, this caller titled Florida could uh, actually be Flo Rita. Who can sing, you know, about the apple bottom jeans to us. Florida. Oh go ahead, you're on PWR Interactive. What's your name? Uh Sean Taylor. Uh, I'm from He's Sorry from... about that, caller. We will uh let me get you back on here. There you go. Sorry about that. Go ahead, caller. Hey, uh, what's up, Meathead? How you doing? Hey, what's up? Who's this? Ah, uh, this would be Rudy Poo thirty two from the forum. Okay, and you're from where? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Rudy Poo, 32. You know, too much rhyming a little late at night. Yeah, I know. Well, I thought it was a clever name, you know. That's okay. Go ahead with your comment or your question, please. Well, my question is, do you believe the money in the bank is going to be the show stopper, let's say, of WrestleMania? The show stopper, the the highlight of the night? Um, Yeah. Yeah, actually, I do. I think, again, this push that Jeff Hardy is getting, which has, you know, grabbed me and pulled me along with it. This is Jeff Hardy's match, just like I called last year with it being Kennedy's match. This is Jeff Hardy's match. You know what's great, though, is the fact that with Jericho in it, we're going to see a couple things out of Jericho, you know, a couple spots that people haven't seen from Jericho in a while. He's going to have his mark. You've got Shelton Benjamin. You've got Jeff Hardy. You've got Jericho. You've got guys that can do some things in the ring. But, again, this is Jeff Hardy's – it's his match. Who else do you think is going to get in? I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter who else gets in because Shelton Benjamin, I believe, may indeed win his very first Money in the Bank ladder match. Ah, oh, it's the Nelson. gold standard. Damian Nelson, gold... Are Shelton you Benjamin, track? Shelton Benjamin, the star of the last two, two of the last uh, Money in the Bank ladder matches. Obviously, not participating in last year's, which was a travesty. Shelton Benjamin, an amazing. Is Travis Shamrockery, is that what you're saying? <laughs> an amazing participant in that matchup, and uh, hopefully we will get to see Shelton Benjamin potentially walk out. But here's the good thing about the participants so far. Jericho can win it. Hardy can win it. Benjamin can win it. There's so many. Carlito, I think that's probably the least chance, but so win. many people can actually win it. That and, and, that, and that's the joy of the money in the bank, and we saw it a couple of years in a row now, that there are so many opportunities for a person to win it. And there are those who still subscribe to the philosophy that – Jeff Hardy may indeed win it and end up in a four-way main event on top of the card at WrestleMania. I don't subscribe yeah. to that possibility, yeah. but it does exist. Yeah. I think Hardy's going to win it, and he's going to cash it in on Cena when he wins it. Um, yeah. You know, and we're all hoping for this, and we all think this is going to happen consistently. Oh, everybody said Kennedy was going to do it last year, too. Why would you... Why would well, you Kennedy won it? it last year. Well, didn't win it, but uh, Kennedy did win it last year. Had to give it up because of an injury. It in. Everybody assumed Kennedy would cash it in right away. Again, why would you kill the possibility and the opportunity that is Jeff Hardy holding the Money in the Bank suitcase and having that kind of hanging around his neck? The only problem I have with it is the fact that Jeff Hardy, when he came out to the highlight, highlight reel tonight, um, he's the Intercontinental Champion, right? Where the where the frick was his belt? Does that belt yeah, even I agree exist? With you there. Does I mean, care anymore? 
What's up with the Marshall. no reaction for Jericho? Um, again, you know, that's Damien and his damn Democrats pushing my man down. Uh, no, wait, no, there's absolutely no reason <laughs> and no, no, no way that can be pushed on me. I simply... <laughs> I didn't even acknowledge that. The caller from Pennsylvania acknowledged that Jericho was, A, in the ring when we came back from break, which, by the way, same thing they did to Vince McMahon a couple of weeks ago, so I don't really put any weight to that. But uh, the Only fans, because it was Vince McMahon, right? Otherwise it was, ah, Jericho doesn't even get an intro, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I think there is a statement made there when you come back from break and, and the wrestler's already in the ring. Usually that's uh, what the jobbers do. It's happened to Orton with the belt, too, so... Mm, let's see, Orton with a belt. Well, you go, it, it has not happened to Orton with the belt. It has what happened. has happened. Even, what ha- what has happened to Orton time. with the belt is he has been intro. They've gone to break, came back with him in the ring, no, and then no, no. started I mean, You didn't even watch the product half the time. You didn't realize that Orton was When did it happen then? Champion. When did it happen? Do you want me to sit here on the Internet? And no, yeah, go right ahead. If you're saying it happened, when did it happen? I'm telling you exactly what did happen. Downloading my porn. Caller from Pennsylvania, thank you very much for calling in to PWR Interactive. Let's go now to our next caller from, we're going to actually go to Florida again. We've got two callers from Florida, so why don't you both speak, but only one of you is live. Uh, Yes, hello. Hello, Florida, what's your name? Uh, My name is Sean from Gainesville. Sean from Gainesville, new caller. What's your question or comment? Uh, I I was wondering if you think ECW is going to be defunct as a third brand anytime soon because it seems like Vince um, brought it back for the hardcore extreme team about it, but all the ECW legends are gone except for Tommy Dreamer, Stevie Richards, and Boss Mahoney. So I was just wondering what you thought about that. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if Vince brought it back for the extreme so much as he brought it back for an established name that he can make money off of. Yeah. To be on, to be completely honest with you, and you're right. Those uh, most of the legends or most of the originals or whatever the hell they're calling them today are gone. And Paul's is jobbing out on SmackDown. Tommy Dreamer is wearing bandanas on ECW, carrying around a 120 pound guy. And who else do we have left? Stevie Richards. He's talking about coming back from throat surgery. So that's it. Shelton Benjamin, we're... the Gold Standard, Elijah Burke. I mean, you've got no, some no, good CM Punk. No, no, we're talking CM about the ECW originals, Donkey. Talking about the ECW originals here. I, I mean, are you watching the product? So, yeah, you're right. When he brought ECW back, he brought it back maybe thinking he could get extreme, but I don't think that's the case. I think it's that he brought it back for something that will make money. And as long as ECW continues to make money, it's making money for sci-fi. They're getting advertising dollars. I don't see it, I don't see it going away. Yeah, um, and just one last question. Um, what do you think of the tag team division right now? Like, there's what not any – yeah, exactly. Like, there's not, there's not, it's, there's no Edge and Christian or Hardys or or any of that stuff anymore. You got Santina and Carlito. You have all these like opposite people teaming up, and it just seems like they're just trying to find people to fill in the spots. They do have tag teams, but I mean, look at what what they're doing to their tag teams. What the hell happened to Cade and Murdoch? Right. Well, like, Cade got West injured. Texas Rednecks now. Cade got injured. We saw no, Murdoch I'm talking about they were wrestle. on the show tonight, Donkey. Did you pay attention? They, yes, they were on the show tonight. They were brought yeah. back together after Cade was brought back into a singles match last week. He just recently returned from injury. Cade has been back so. more than two weeks. <clears throat> anyway, what is with their get-up? Are they from West Texas now? Aren't they supposed to be a couple cowboy, you know, redneck, uh, you know, partners? They're, they're just jobbed out to, you know, these mixed match teams. They wrestled against Flair and HBK. And obviously, they're just there to put over Flair and HBK. So they have no tag division. Who are the tag champs on Raw on SmackDown? I mean, I know who they are, but, you know, will the average fan know? No. I mean, on Raw, right. it's, it's, it's um, Hardcore Holly and uh, uh, Cody Rhodes. On SmackDown, yeah. it's not even SmackDown wrestlers. They're ECW wrestlers. It doesn't right. matter. Again, I've made this point before. The IC, the U.S., and both tag belts are non-existent. When was the last yeah. time they were defended? Yeah, MVP's held that title for like a, like ten a month. Just and the only people that he's defended it against was like Matt Hardy and Ric Flair at Vengeance. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean it's just like ridiculous. Losers. Any questions for Damien? Um, not really. 
Come on. Thanks for your call from Gainesville, so Florida. Like He's not as Let's go to our local. next caller, caller, caller from Northeast New York. You're on the Pro Wrestling Report. What's your name? New York. Northeast New York, you're live. Oh, hello. My name's Elijah. Hello, Elijah. Elijah. Burke? What's up, buddy? Uh, no. <laughs> but I got two questions. My first one is, what are their plans with The Undertaker? Do they plan on having him win the title at WrestleMania and then, like, retiring after his long run, or? Let's look at what happened to The Undertaker after WrestleMania last year, after he won the title, went 15-0, and got injured shortly thereafter, had to relinquish the title. Never really got that last run that what uh, many say last year's WrestleMania was supposed to be, or post-WrestleMania was supposed to be. I would venture to say that he certainly will not lose the streak to Edge this year. I Ooh. think he will walk out of WrestleMania as the champion, but I think it will be a short-lived reign. Um, I think when you look at the card, remember, Batista's buried in the middle of WrestleMania now. He was on top of it last year, essentially, for the SmackDown sure. brand. Now buried in the middle against Umaga, or Umanga, depending on how you want to say it. Uh -huh. um, so SmackDown's in a, bit of a, in a bit of a unique situation right now. Um, I, they could go either way in that match, which makes it good for us, the fans. And remember, we'll be there live covering WrestleMania like no one else. But it will be an interesting match for us, the fans, because you just don't know. Much like last well, year, we last... didn't know whether or not The Undertaker was going to win, or if Batista was going to win. Yeah. And then my second question is, if the WWE is trying to push MVP, how come he keeps jobbing? Uh, you don't always have to win matches to get what is called the rub or the push. Uh, you certainly do uh, get, in some cases, losing the match. I mean, think back to uh, SummerSlam 2002, if, if you can remember it, it was HBK versus Triple H. HBK came back, got his triumphant return, beat uh, Triple H, but Triple H went over in that match because Triple H attacked Shawn Michaels at the end of the match, hit him with a sledgehammer and was heinous, and you know it just hit him in his spine, and, and that was. Uh, it's not always who wins the match. I think MVP has been elevated because of his positioning. Remember, he had that big match with Ric Flair. Uh, and potentially was going to be the man who ended Flair's career. And now I think we're going to continue to see whether or not he's defending the U.S. championship. He is the prestiged U.S. champion. And I think that certainly does help uh, MVP in his status. And you know okay. the thing with the, the U.S. championship, too, is MVP is going to be able to say in promos, you know, I've held the championship for 11 months. I've held, uh, I mean, But he only much, defended it twice. Right, as <laughs> much as... Right. Well, wrestling fans are ignorant. We're all ignorant because we're going to forget again. Damian, what's the saying? Three months, statute of limitations. Three years for sure. It's gone forever. But let's think back to the days of the 10-11 year title reigns. Let's think back to people laugh about Moolah being women's champion for 25 years because she literally never defended the belt and nor was it sanctioned by anyone. But you look at a Backlund who had the belt for eight years, I believe it was. You look at a Bruno Sammartino who had the belt for a number of years. He would defend it on top of the cards at Madison Square Garden. Ric Flair would defend the NWA championship all over the country but never on a national scale. The belts have not always been defended as frequently as they were in the big boon of the wrestling age when we started seeing big matches on Monday nights on Raw and Nitro, and now we see that um, those matches are sort of pulling back a little. And I'd, I'd like to hear that Kendrick and uh, Brian Kendrick and Paul London were champions for almost a year on the tag team ranks in SmackDown. They JBL champions for almost a year on the SmackDown brand. You know, there's that joking, you know, the 30-day rule, which was enacted many a time back in the 80s <sighs> because it had been that long since the belt was determined, well, had been defended. You know, all the I, I don't think we need to see as many defenses of the belt, but we certainly do need to see more than we're seeing. Yeah, because right it keeps it special if you don't do it that much. That's true. That's indeed the case. Thank you very much for that yeah. call. Elijah from New York. We are going to take one final call uh, here on the show, and it is Tiz Boy, T-I-Z-Z -Z Boy. Uh, go ahead with your name and location. Tiz Boy, you're on PWR Interactive. Going. You Going. were on PWR Interactive. Let's go to the other caller from Florida. Uh, you are, uh, what's your name from Florida and where are you from city-wise? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm from Orlando. I'm a regular caller on here. Welcome um, back. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, we keep asking this guy to hook us up with uh, girls, uh, uh, escorts. <laughs> I almost said. The, the ones that are right in front of church is chicken on OBT. You know yeah. what I'm talking about. Hey, uh, What's your Peter, question? Let me- uh, let me just say one last thing. I'm sorry for going after you uh, last week about your uh, choices in the draft. You, sure. you did the best you could with what you had, so I just want to, to uh, Thank you. apologize about that. Uh, I, I, actually, I have a question about the uh, this thing with, between uh, John Bradshaw, Layfield, and Finley. Uh, do you guys see the whole storyline, the whole Hornswoggle thing, going anywhere after WrestleMania? I mean, it's kind of fallen apart uh, as of recently, you know. The, the fact that they throw, threw JBL into there, a guy who was, you know, the biggest Finley mark on SmackDown. And uh, I also want to bring something up. Whatever happened to that deal? There was a, there was something mentioned about a deal between Vince and uh, Finley Absolutely. like said, months ago. We're going to keep and, our deal, right? Yeah, that's uh, he, I believe he said that. He said, we're going to keep our deal, right? You understand the agreement we made. Yeah, yeah and I, whatever, whatever happened to that? I, I just pulled did, a WCW move and just forgot about it. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I I just think they should just end end this uh, whole entire storyline. It it it's just not doing anything anymore. It, it was funny, and now it's trying to be serious, and it's it really is just falling apart. And by the way, the uh, the Hummer was black. I think that we'll see down the road uh, this storyline. You know, it's keeping JBL busy. It's keeping Finley busy. It's keeping Hornswoggle busy. It's keeping Vince McMahon busy. So um, there's still some minute interest in it. Uh, obviously, not as much as who's the daddy. Uh, and when it was announced that Vince McMahon was indeed Hornswoggle's father, and uh, we've now got some elements where you know Finley um, is the father apparently as of this week. And I think again we'll see that match going into WrestleMania. It'll be Finley versus JBL. Somehow or another, expect Hornswoggle and or Vince McMahon to be involved. They're all Irish, I think. Uh, so, and we'll, I thought we'll, we'll the real payoff, Damien, was supposed to be Vince versus Finlay. I mean, that really is where yeah, it should have. Yeah, but not, I'm not sure if I, I want to see Vince wrestle again. No, no I don't want to see him wrestle either, but he's smart enough to be able to work around it with his well, – uh, Vince, Vince, Vince doesn't really wrestle, if you think about it, if you see any of his matches. He's just good at taking a, a really good beating. I mean, if you look at yeah, he's also good at swapping up the card, and I don't think it's a special enough match, especially if you can look at, if you had to pick, do you want Vince McMahon versus Finley, or do you want JBL versus Finley? I think most everybody's uh, well, going to go wise, for JBL. Storyline-wise, I want Finley McMahon. Storyline-wise, I want Vince versus Finley. I mean, yeah, exactly. I, don't re- I really don't want to see JBL wrestle. Uh, you know, he, he needs to wrestle Even with his shirt Even though he on. is a wrestling Damien, god. Damien. This guy, this guy got thrown into the mix just out of nowhere. The buildup has been Finley McMahon. It's where it's been going for three, four, five months. Fine, McMahon's the guest ref. McMahon's the special enforcer. Okay. I don't want to see McMahon wrestling in that match. I want to well, see I a real wrestling I, match at I WrestleMania. The, I want to see JBL versus Finley. The if real I, if playoff I had a choice. should have been Vince versus Finley with maybe JBL escorting him to the ring or maybe JBL special As enforcer. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So. Thank you much for that call from Florida. Uh, make sure you um, – have you gotten your WrestleMania tickets yet? I know you had some challenges, but uh, – Well, uh, I have a roommate that's going to uh, WrestleMania. He's also going to the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony, Can too. you get us some uh, escorts for the weekend? Church is so. checking. But uh, I have one last question uh, about the, uh, the Hall of Fame because uh, one of the guys that I've been wanting to get into the Hall of Fame for a while has been uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. And I keep oh, hearing yeah. these weird stories that apparently – there's some like underground heat between him and Vince, and you know the chances of him are incredibly slim. Do you know anything about that? It's because of his two and a half days he spent in TNA. Aww. Randy Savage is Randy Savage, by many people's estimation, is not quite stable right now. One thing we know for sure is the Ultimate Warrior will never indeed be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Some are saying Randy Savage, in a similar mindset to that of a very different ultimate warrior um macho man uh, certainly deserves to be in the hall of fame certainly deserves to be in the hall of fame uh but uh, remember i don't think any of us thought that uh in chicago we would see as part of wrestlemania 22 uh we would see bret hart inducted into the hall of fame either so right um, and there so are two people three is, yeah now you're there are three macho people man for sure man. which is the first is, is bruno san martino will never be inducted into the hall of fame the Ultimate Warrior will never be inducted in the Hall of Fame. And I think Randy Savage is a close third in that oh, never category. He's going to put uh, 
Dynamite Kid right after that, too? Well, so you're saying I wouldn't put him in the never category. I mean, those are three people I know for sure. Uh, um, two people I know for sure will not be inducted. One, because Bruno will never accept it. Second, because the Ultimate Warrior will never be asked. And third, <laughs> third one. If you want If you want a legitimate third one, I'll give you Chris Benoit. He's definitely never going to be in the Hall of Fame. Ooh. There's some conflicting opinions out there as it pertains to that. Uh, folks, if if he is inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame, that being Chris Benoit, it will be at least five years from now, probably ten. It will be a very long time from now if it were to ever happen because that is still uh, fresh. Very fresh. Thank you for the call from Florida. We're going to try one more time with Tiz Boy, who has uh, figured out how to unmute himself. Where this could be, uh, well, it's a Tiz Boy, so of course it's going to be a gentleman. Your name and where you're calling from. Tiz Boy from Richmond, California. Richmond, California. Yeah. Hmm. All right. What's your comment or question? Uh, I really didn't have a question. I just was sitting on trying to listen to my computer. Uh, but I uh, just like what you guys do and. No, I love the PWR show. Big fan. Don't hang All right. Up. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, and be sure to tune in to the PWR debate coming up this week. We've got your questions lined up from our YouTube channel. You can be a part of it either by your video submission or just simply commenting there. Also, remember, sign up for PWR Mobile. It's a free service. doesn't cost you a dime. As long as you have text messaging, you get no more than two to three updates per week. You get breaking news. You get exclusive news when PWR becomes available on the Internet. And also, you get exclusive updates, including breaking news today on the site of WrestleMania 25. Also, in don't, forget, Alaska. don't forget to uh, head on over to the PWRshow.com website and check out the forum, PWR forum. Some call it the most interactive uh, wrestling forum out there today. The PWR debate comes to you this week. We will be uh, on coming to you later this week, and then next week, as we announced last week, as I try to stay with it here, uh, PWR moving to Wednesdays, PWR Interactive staying on Monday nights. You'll see some more information coming out as to when you can see our exclusive interviews with the Iron Sheik, WWE Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. and the father, the current WWE champion, Cowboy Bob Orton. For Frank Cosentino, for the man they call Meathead, Damian Nelson signing off of PWR Interactive. Make sure you tune in to the PWR debate coming up later this week on PWRshow.com. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.